Welcome to the Character Forge, where I work on creating a character for D&D 5th edition that focuses on personality traits and background with a loose mechanical build. These characters aren't meant to be carbon copies, but instead give you all inspiration for your own ideas while tying them into Faerunian lore. Let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments below. Today we'll be working on Rimuru Tempest from the slimest guy that basically everyone knows now. Unfortunately, there is no slime race in D&D, but we'll make do. We're going to need a few things here, and we're not going to be able to copy all of what our good slime boy is capable of because he's an Isagai character, but first we'll need a malleable body that can change appearance with ease combined with great unintentional charisma. Second, an innate talent for utilizing fire and lightning, mixing and matching various spells together to create new combinations on the fly. And finally, we want at least a basic semblance of martial arts skill and knowledge, even if it's not exactly our go-to. Now for scores, we're using the standard array. You're charismatic with a sharp intuition and surprisingly strong willpower, as well as having a modern education in a fantasy world. So we're giving you a 15 charisma, 14 wisdom, and 10 intelligence. Next, you're completely lacking true muscle mass, but you're agile and incredibly hardy, so we'll go with an 8 in strength, 12 dexterity, and 13 constitution. Obviously, these should all be much higher, but... Yeah, it's anime. I gotta do what I can. Now, when it comes to race, there's obviously no slime option, but there is a changeling. This allows you to completely change your appearance at will, using an action, via shape changer. And, you know, you can't turn into a giant beast or something, but you can later. With this, you have standard movement of 30, proficiency in persuasion and insight. You're excellent at getting people to take the non-aggressive route and reading the room, after all. This also gives you plus 2 dexterity for a new total of 14, and a plus 1 charisma for a new total of 16. As a final side benefit, you get the deep speech language. Now, for your background, there isn't really a way to swing I was reborn in another world in classical favorite. So we're going with another angle instead. You were not born, but simply awoke, laying within the center of a cave, lacking memory and direction of any sort. You had nothing, and yet there was something that called you from the void of your memory. A voice that filled your mind and offered you guidance. Information you couldn't understand how you knew of biology, the arcane, of the world around you as a whole. It flooded your mind, and you spent time within that cave, seemingly locked away. Eventually, aimlessly wandering through the void, alight with only glowing fungi and moss, you suddenly came upon a massive statue, carved in the shape of a mighty dragon. Yet, this shrine was overtaken. The voice in the back of your mind urged you to pay your respects, to clean and care for it in this dark place. Yet to be led astray, you listened, cleansing the statue to the best of your ability, and in turn, by the end of it, a fragment of power entered you, a warm sensation as the brilliant blue dragon caught the light of the glowing fungus around you. With it came a jolt, a spark of electricity. A fragment of a storm, of a tempest, granted in gratitude to whatever ancient being held ties to this long-forgotten shrine. Through the dark and the dangers found within the earth, this power helped to protect you, and the voice within your mind helped to guide you, teach you, as you slowly found your way free of the depths. Using this, we're going to take a slight variance to the Witherbloom Initiative background. Replacing survival with perception, as well as gaining proficiency in nature, an herbalism kit, and the draconic language. Instead of a background feature, this also provides you with three spells. Two cantrips being druidcraft for your slow building connection to nature and herbs alongside spare the dying and cure wounds, so that you always have some of those magical herbs and energy to spare in order to save others from death and injury. Now for class. At level 1, we're taking Hexblade Warlock, because it's too universally useful for shonen shenanigans. You're now proficient in the breastplate you'll be wearing, as well as the rapier you'll be using as a katana. Your saves are Charisma and Wisdom, with proficiency in Arcana and Investigation, representing the knowledge of the world that your voice grants you. You also get Hexblade's Curse, allowing you to focus your ire on a single enemy, which happens a lot in shonen. Finally, you also get Pact Magic, taking Booming Blade to make your sword more potent, Eldritch Blast for the concentrated beams and blades of pressurized water, Armor of Agathus to compress that water around you defensively, and Hellish Rebuke for your first access to basic flame magic and self-defense. At level 2, we're taking another level in Warlock. You've learned how to detect the magicules around you, enhancing your senses significantly. Due to this, take the invocation for Eldritch Sight, allowing you to cast Detect Magic around you at will. 
For your second, take Beguiling Influence, granting you proficiency in persuasion and deception, allowing you to choose a new racial proficiency. Take Acrobatics to showcase your honing physical skill through the Custom Origins feature. For your spell, take Arms of Hadar as the beginning of your gluttony skill, beginning to slowly flourish within you. Now at level 3, we're shifting over to Storm Sorcerer as that shard of power from the statue shows itself. This gives you Wind Speaker, allowing you to learn Primordial, as well as Tempestus Magic, allowing you to fly 10 feet without provoking opportunity attacks before or after casting a first level or higher spell. Keep in mind you have infinite Detect Magic, so even if you're tapped on spell slots, if you need to escape, this is still an option. For your spell casting, take Firebolt for your first true offensive use of the fire magic you've learned alongside Lightning Lure, Shocking Grasp, and Thunderclap to represent the various storm magic forming within you. To showcase your increase in mana density and combat skill, take Shield and Absorb Elements to survive to higher levels as a caster. Level 4, we're taking a quick step back from our last level of Warlock. This grants us a Pact of the Blade so that we can summon our blade at will within our transformations. For your spell, take Mirror Image to help ensure you can survive your brief melee excursions. Level 5, we're switching back to Sorcerer and staying there. You gain Font of Magic, which gives you an extra spell slot, and that's about it for now, as well as Silvery Barbs for your spell. You have a habit of calling out during the midst of combat to try and dissuade the conflict, after all. Level 6, you become a proper mage as your magic begins to grow. You gain Meta Magic, so take Quicken Spell and Twin Spell to maximize the usage of your spells throughout the combat. For your spell, take Lesser Restoration. You're not a miracle healer by nature, but neutralizing poisons and sicknesses are definitely in your wheelhouse. Level 7, you get a plus 2 Charisma for a new total of 18, finally making all your spells and key skills just better. For your spells, take Message to communicate with your followers and see Invisibility to map out the last of your magical detection. Level 8, you gain a spell. Take Counterspell for when the voice in your mind alerts you of incoming danger and helps you separate the foundation of the runes and glyphs. Level 9 grants you Heart of the Storm for resistance to lightning and thunder damage, as well as cause damage to any creature of your choice nearby automatically. No save, with the damage being an average fighter's melee attack. That's terrifying. You also gain Storm Guide for minimal control of localized weather, basically at will. Great for seafaring or just fun roleplay. For your spell, take Lightning Bolt and vaporize a line of enemies as well as anyone within 10 feet of you with your new class feature. Level 10, you gain a spell. Take Polymorph and shift into something massive and dangerous at the last minute when your healing can't handle the barrage of damage you're sustaining. Helpful to turn into a Chimera Freak to fake loss of control and escape a near-death situation. Level 11 gives you plus 2 Charisma for a new total of 20. Congratulations! For your spell, take either Flame Shield, now that you've eaten the Fire Fae, or Storm Sphere to have another potent control and offensive option that terrifies the ogres that unintentionally hunted you down. Level 12, you gain another spell. Take Greater Restoration for your unnatural feats of recovery for both yourself and others. Level 13, you gain an extra Meta Magic. Take Transmutive Spell to represent your uncanny ability to now manipulate and change the elements of your spells at will, combining them, maximizing your Storm Dragon benefits while avoiding resistances more easily. Not many things resistant to thunder damage. For your spells, take Green Flame Blade and Summon Draconic Spirit to bring forth your powers and create a brief ally for you to utilize. Level 14, you gain a spell. Take Globe of Invulnerability for when you need to neutralize the spells and magic of the numerous enemies you've made up to this point. Level 15, you gain your first feat. Take Resilience and help boost up that sad health, while greatly improving your concentration checks with a new total of 14 constitution. Level 16, you gain a spell. Take Draconic Transformation to sprout forth your wings and take flight. Combine this with your innate flight from your subclass and you actually have some ridiculous mobility, as well as free disengage that isn't actually disengage. Level 17, you gain Storm's Fury to just absolutely devastate anyone stupid enough to attack you in melee, capable of not only dealing immediate return damage to them, but also possibly sending them flying. Why do I not see more people using this subclass? Level 18, you gain a spell. Take Incendiary Cloud, change its damage to lightning, and watch the absolute mayhem spread from your other abilities in combination with it. 
Level 19, you'd get another feat. Take tough, because bless your heart, you need all the help you can get with your health. Finally, at level 20, you get a new meta magic. Take heightened magic to make your spells even more terrifying, and for your spell, take wish for the moments you need to somehow magically resurrect hundreds of NPC at once, and then roll really well so you can keep using wish after that. Now, how strong is this Rimuru? Who isn't quite the real thing, but you know, we're, we're close. Honestly, your damage options are terrifying. Storm Sorcery is a marvelous DPS and control build to manipulate the battlefield. Your area of effect and single target damage is just ridiculous, and your ability to choose different elements and damage types that things just won't be resistant to is phenomenal. Combine this with the fact that you're actually incredibly mobile as your spellcasting, which helps nullify one of the major weaknesses you have. Yeah, that's pretty good. You also have decent utility spells, though most are for combat, but you make up for it with your excellent skill coverage. You make for a wonderful secondary scout, as well as a primary face for the party. You even have a bit of knowledge skills to work with. Finally, you're surprisingly solid for a secondary healer and support. With healing, restoration, and polymorph, you may not be a cleric, but you can definitely handle a situation where your party may be struggling. That said, you're definitely not the legendary slime from the series, with immunity to damage types and incredible physical abilities alongside unfathomable magic. Because, you know, this is D&D, not anime. Your saves to retain control of your faculties and resist various effects, maintain your spells, and resist conditions are all pretty solid. But your dexterity saves are really lackluster for the agility shown in the show. Normally, the counter for this is having a high hit point total. It helps nullify it because you just eat the damage anyway. Not really an option here. Another option is high armor class. You have neither of those. Your AC is 18 with a shield. Yes, you have your mobility. You also have various defensive spells. Shield of invulnerability, the shield spell, absorb elements, all that stuff is phenomenal and it will help mitigate this weakness. It does not make up for it. Those are all limited resources and only help for certain situations. So with hit points that are just barely past that 150 threshold at level 20, you are very squishy, and you can burn out easily if you're not careful. But that's why D&D is a party game. That's why you pay attention to your reserves, work with the voice that has already guided you and assisted you throughout your life, rely on your allies, treat them well. You're a likable person that innately helps those around you grow. So don't argue when they want to help protect you too. Thank you all for watching. If you have a character you'd like to see, let me know. What would you do differently for this build, though? What did you like about it? Did I do anything that caught you off guard, or that you didn't see coming? Any unique build? I for one didn't even realize how good the sorcery subclass for Storm was until I started reading it for this. Did it surprise you too? Did you take a look at the subclass and go, holy crap, some of these abilities are actually really good? Cause I did. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, maybe check out some of these? Now thank you to all my patrons and channel members. If you'd like to guarantee a video, then check out my Patreon to commission me once a month at higher tiers. Or get to directly vote on the videos for just $3, either as a channel member here on YouTube or over on Patreon. Either way, thank you for all your support, and honestly, just keep watching. That is legitimately the best thing you can do for me to support me. Have an amazing day everyone, be safe, be kind to yourselves and each other. I'll see you in the next video.